Radiation. The mysterious, dangerous, deadly thing everyone is afraid of. But what is radiation? Radiation is any emission of energy that travels through some medium or space. Think of the ripples in a pond, your Wi-Fi signal, or the sweet, sweet sound of that muscle car. We're not interested in these types of radiation, though. We're here to talk about nuclear radiation, the emission of radioactive particles from nuclear decay. Radiation comes in two forms, non-ionizing and ionizing. We won't be talking about non-ionizing radiation, which is harmless things like radio waves, visible light, and 5G. We'll be talking about ionizing radiation, the type everyone thinks of when they mention radiation. As I briefly explained in my atom video, an atom typically has the same number of electrons as protons, which results in a net zero or neutral charge for the atom. An ion, however, has a net positive or negative charge, which means there is not the same number of protons and electrons. Ionizing radiation, therefore, is when a radioactive particle collides with an atom and ejects an electron from that atom, which leaves the atom ionized. Ionizing radiation can cause chemical bonds to collapse and damage cells in your body, namely your DNA, which is how radiation harms you. However, that's a topic for another video. Just know that radiation and DNA don't mix. On this channel, the ionizing radiation we care about comes from four types of particles. Alpha particles, beta particles, photons, and neutrons. These four particles are all quite different in terms of their size, damage to humans, and penetrating power. Let's start with the alpha particle. An alpha particle is essentially a helium atom. It has two protons and two neutrons, just like a helium atom, but no electrons. Alpha particles are released when heavy radioactive elements, such as uranium and plutonium, decay. Although alpha particles are the biggest and most damaging radioactive particle, they are also the least penetrating. This is precisely because of their size and non-zero charge. Remember, a helium atom with no electrons. As alpha particles travel through a material, the positive charge of surrounding atomic nuclei push the alpha particle around, greatly reducing its energy, just like how sharp turns in a car lowers its speed. Because an alpha particle is an ion, it eventually slows down enough to absorb some electrons from neighboring atoms, ionizing them, and becomes a normal atom of helium, stopping its reign of terror. Alpha particles are so limited at penetrating that a standard sheet of paper or the layer of dead skin on your body are both thick enough to shield virtually all alpha particles. So, alpha particles are harmless to you from outside your body. However, if you get alpha-emitting materials like uranium or plutonium inside your body, alpha particles become the most dangerous form of radiation. When the alphas are emitted inside of you, you don't have that layer of dead skin protecting you anymore. The massive alpha particles will smash through your DNA like a wrecking ball. Nobody wants that, so don't go licking any pieces of uranium you may find. Next up, we have beta particles. These are electrons that are emitted by the nucleus of an atom that has too many neutrons or protons. Like alpha particles, beta particles also have a net charge and get the same pushing and pulling effect from atomic nuclei that alphas do. However, because betas are much smaller than alphas and have a lower charge, you'll need something thicker to shield them, like a few millimeters of metal. Your outermost layer of skin is not thick enough to shield betas, so they're just as damaging from the outside of your body as they are from the inside. Lick away! Just kidding, don't do that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the one you've been waiting for, the big kahuna, photons! The particle of light. Unlike alpha or beta particles, the photon is essentially weightless and can behave as both a wave and a particle. Thanks, quantum mechanics! For our purposes, we consider them as particles. Photons can be released when high-energy beta particles violently collide with the electrons of an atom, also known as Bremsstrahlung. We're not too concerned with Bremsstrahlung. Photons are more frequently released during a nuclear decay, though. In this instance, we call the photons gamma rays. Gamma rays are neutral and aren't susceptible to being pushed around by atomic nuclei, which makes them very penetrating. 
This is because atoms are mostly empty space. Gamma rays can pass right through many atoms with ease. The only way to shield a gamma ray is to put enough atoms in its way, and eventually the gamma ray will hit some of them. Gamma rays hitting atoms doesn't happen often, though, so you'll need a lot of atoms. At least several inches of steel or concrete. However, the best shields for gamma rays are lead, tungsten, and depleted uranium. That's because of how dense these materials are. You can physically get many more atoms in the same volume as you would with steel or concrete. Gamma rays are usually the only type of radiation that you have to worry about in any given radioactive situation. Finally, last but not least, the neutron. As discussed in my atom video, a neutron is a nucleon, which means it's from the nucleus of an atom. Neutrons are emitted when atoms fission or split, but that's a topic for another video. Like gamma rays, neutrons are neutral, which makes them very penetrating. They also weigh a lot compared to betas and gammas. Shielding neutrons is like shielding gamma rays in that they're both neutral and both must directly hit a lot of atoms to lose energy and be shielded. With gamma rays, the densest materials like uranium and tungsten are the best shields. However, with neutrons, the opposite is true. The best shields include low density materials like woods, plastics, and oils, and above all, water. What do all these materials have in common? They all have a lot of hydrogen atoms. From a neutron's perspective, a hydrogen is just a proton. Hydrogen has one proton and one electron, but the electron is so small that we can ignore it. Because the proton and neutron weigh pretty much the same, the neutron loses a lot of energy or speed when it hits a hydrogen atom. Think of shielding neutrons like playing billiards. If you hit one billiard ball into another, and it's not you know, a direct hit, you get a glancing blow, both balls will come out with a slower speed than the first ball had initially. If the neutron keeps hitting hydrogen atoms, it'll keep losing energy. And the less energy a neutron has, the less damage it does, and the easier it is for it to be absorbed by a nearby atom, ending its reign of terror. This process of slowing down neutrons is called neutron moderation, and it's important to both effective neutron shielding and nuclear fission, which is a topic for another video. Light elements like hydrogen, helium, lithium, and carbon are all good neutron moderators. The lighter the element, the better it moderates. On the other hand, when neutrons hit an atom of iron or uranium, heavy elements, it's like hitting a rubber ball against a bowling ball. If you can imagine it, the rubber ball would go flying off at basically the same speed it had when you threw it, while the bowling ball remains still. This means heavier elements like iron and uranium are not good at moderating or shielding neutrons. So where can you find neutron radiation? Unless you're standing right next to an operating nuclear reactor, a supercritical chain reaction, or a sample of Californium-252, any of which you're not at all likely to stumble upon at your local Walmart, it's going to be very hard to find any neutron radiation in nature. So to recap, radiation comes in two forms, non-ionizing, like a visible light, and ionizing, such as alpha, beta, gamma, and neutron radiation. These four types of radiation have different sizes, damage potential to humans, and penetrating power. Alpha particles can be shielded by a piece of paper, are not dangerous to you from the outside, but are the most dangerous from inside your body. Beta particles can be shielded by a few millimeters of metal and are equally damaging from outside or inside your body. Gamma particles must be shielded by a few inches of steel or concrete and are also equally damaging. Neutrons are best shielded by hydrogen-containing materials like waters, oils, and plastics, and are also equally damaging. Finally, gamma rays are most often the main or only radiation concern in a radioactive environment. So guys, that was radiation and radioactive particles. This video has been a lot of fun to make. If you made it this far, it means you really care about nuclear physics, which is awesome. My aim is to educate people on nuclear matters, as I believe we're at a critical juncture in human history and people need to be informed about nuclear topics to better guide our path to the future. If you liked what you saw, consider checking out my other content and subscribing. Coming up, I'll be talking about measuring radiation and then discussing nuclear fission and fusion. Hope to see you then.